The Real McCoys, starring Walter Brennan, created by Irving Pincus. Want you to meet the family known as the Real McCoys. That's Grand Pappy Amos, the head of the clan. He roars like a lion, but he's gentle as a lamb. And now here's Luke, who beams with joy since he may take Mrs. Luke McCoy. From West Virginia they came to stay in sunny California. Old Grandpappy Amos and the girls and the boys of the family known as the Real McCoys. Grandma, I've seen that picture there a hundred times, but every time I see it, I got to laugh. <laughs> a a full-grown man sitting up there on your shoulders. <laughs> Cousin Leonard, he loved to play horsey up to the time he was 45 years old. <laughs> Young at heart, huh? <laughs> That's about the size of it, yeah. But he had to give it up, of course, when he, when he got to be a notary public. <laughs> Who are they? <laughs> Brother Josh's boys. That's Uncle Walter there, that's Uncle Ben, Uncle Luther, and Uncle Lucius. Uncle Lucius is the one I was named after. See, Luke is short for Lucius. Yeah, and little Luke is short for Luke. Yeah, that's about the strength of it, yeah. Them boys sure had trouble hanging on to their hair, didn't they? They look like a row of shiny pumpkins. <laughs> they sure are bald. Such an early age, too, poor man. Boy, I sure hope I'm bald when I grow up. I won't have to have any haircuts and won't have to comb my hair. Little Luke, you bite your tongue. A man's hair is his ticket to handsomeness. So, uh, Grandpa. Yeah, Luke. Yeah, just because a person was named after another person, that don't necessarily mean he's going <clears> to <throat> take after him, does it? Oh, of course not. Gosh, you're nothing like Uncle Lucius at all. No resemblance. Oh. <laughs> you're exactly like your Uncle Walter. He's the one in the end here. <laughs> Who's that? Well, silly, that's Luke. <laughs> Holy Toledo. Look at all the hair he had then. That head of hair was the first thing I noticed about Luke. I sat behind it for six weeks in Sunday school before it turned around and talked to me. You mean I had more than now? Oh, I don't know, Luke. Your face is just a little bit longer. Well, that's just a natural sign of aging. <laughs> You're exactly like your Uncle Warren. down too tight, son. You shut the blood off in your head. And then? <laughs> huh? Go on. Finish what you're going to say. What are you all stoked up at? Just don't like people making smart cracks about my looks, that's all. Nobody said nothing about your looks. Now, come on. Get going here so as you get this fence built. Scaring me like that. I'm sorry I raised my voice, Grandpa. Enough to make a man's hair stand on end. There you go again. <laughs> Smart cracks. <laughs> What's eating at you, Luke? Who says anything's eating at me? Well, you're sure Mr. Touchy today, jumping on everything I say. What's wrong, Luke? Well, you hardly touch your roof, Arb, and you've just been sort of sitting there moping like. Oh, I was just thinking. Were you worried about anything in particular? No, no, I was just thinking about us, about you and me. Oh. Remember when we first met? And, oh, how it was when we started going together, and we well, sort of wondering what it was exactly that drew us together. Fate, I reckon. Well, fate, yeah, sure, but, well, noticing each other's qualities is what really brought us together. Well, of course. Now, if you liked a person for his qualities, and 
say he or she has ten qualities. People don't count qualities. No, but if you did now, if you didn't, say say he has ten qualities and through no fault of his own, he loses one. <laughs> Would she still love him? What? What are you talking about, Lou? Well, it's simple. She married a ten-quality man, and now he's a nine-quality man. Would it make any difference? Raise your voice, Lou. I'm... I'm sorry. Speaking... Speaking quality-wise now, just for argument's sake, what... What was it about me that he liked best? My... my tallness? Oh, I suppose. My good personality with telling jokes and all? Could have been, I reckon. My smiling teeth? They're real nice, Lou. Yeah. Well, now, what... <laughs> exactly, don't you? Lou, I don't know what you're digging for. All I know is that I love you just the way you are, and I hope you never change. Run on into town, will you, and get a, get a couple of gallons of that tree spray? Yeah, okay. You be sure you get the right stuff now. It's called Killjoy. <laughs> Killjoy. Yeah, you know that other bug spray we got? Well, that one, no good at all. The bugs just loved it. <laughs> they, they was holding cocktail parties on every single apricot. <laughs> Killjoy. Hey, and say, Luke, watch McGinnis on the price. Don't leave him scalping. <laughs> <laughs> been in here a long time, ain't you? 22 years. College boy and graduate barber. Yeah, well, I got a problem. Calls for an expert. Oh? Al, I think I'm losing my hair. Yeah? Hmm, let's take a look here. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. The tide's going out all right, Luke. Yeah, the shoreline's getting wider. I knew it. I knew it. Al, you gotta help me. You gotta. Oh, no, that's not panic, Luke. No, let's look over the problem and see what we can do to remedy it. Now, uh, ah, there's the salt treatment. Salt? Mm-hmm. Rock salt. Folks put it on their head and leave it there for about a half an hour, and then they brush it off. And that works, huh? <laughs> oh, gives the head a nice flavor. Would save hair? Not in a million years. <laughs> What else could we do? Well, well, oh, there, there's folks who figure that the hair breaks off because the scalp is too tight. Yes, so they keep pushing up the skin from their face and necks. And the idea is to loosen up the scalp skin. And that works, huh? Oh, sure, get your scalp as loose as a goose. But you get bald anyhow, and then you're stuck with a wrinkled head. <laughs> Are you trying to tell me it's hopeless? Uh, oh, no, no, I'm not finished yet. No, I've got a theory of my own. You see, I am convinced that the problem is in root feeding. You see, hair roots are like living things. They must be fed. Here. Take a look at this. Bernice Fleming hair food. Mm -hmm. That's been on the market since 1896. Nobody's ever found anything better. What's in it, Al? Well, that is Bernice Fleming's little secret. <laughs> if that thing's been on the market that long, must be good. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I always say, Luke. Now, uh, part of the treatment is a short haircut. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that makes it easier for the hair to absorb the root food. <laughs> anything you say, Al, <laughs> I'll do anything. Luke, you're going to be all right. <laughs> Al, I'll never forget you for pulling me through this. Never. That's what barbers are for. <laughs> Like an old, old teenager. <laughs> I always thought 
your head was round. <laughs> oh, for crying out loud. Can't a man go get himself a haircut without causing a whole ruckus? But why? Because I like it this way. That's why. It's style. <laughs> well, it may be the style for teenagers, but on an older person... Yeah, well, what, what do you mean, older person? Luke, you know who you look like. Like one of Uncle Josh's boys, that's who. Please don't ever do nothing like this again. I told you the other night how much I loved your long hair. Uh, long hair, long hair. What would you do if someday I was to get bald? Oh, silly. But no, I, I mean it now. What would you do? Well... Every Halloween, I'd light a candle top of your head. <laughs> need no exercising. Well, you see, especially this. <laughs> what do you want to pick your head muscles for? Well, the heaviest work they do is just lift your eyebrows. <laughs> Come on, Miss, we got work to do. Yeah. Hey, what happened to your hair? I got a haircut. That's what happened to it. Well, you sure got yourself sheared, didn't you? <laughs> well, you look like a porcupine that done got yourself caught in a brush fire. <laughs> I wish somebody could talk about something else besides my haircut. Oh, forget it, Luke. Where's your spray? The spray? You know, the spray in a big yellow can with a picture of the black bug on the side of it. Well, did you buy it or didn't you, Luke? I done give you the money. No. No, I didn't buy it, Grandpa. I... <laughs> but bought this instead. <laughs> what incarnation is that? Oh, it's just uh, exercising cream. Exercising tree. For what? Well, it's a, a sort of muscle fertilizer. Fertilizer? <laughs> for muscles? It's for my hair, Grandpa. For your hair? I don't get it, Luke. Grandpa, the fact is, I'm losing my hair. <laughs> well, that mob you got while you're out of your mind, boy. Grandpa, it's falling out and fast. Al the barber said so. Oh. Well, that's why you've been so feisty the last couple of days, huh? Well, you know how wives take it when husbands lose their hair? Everything's liable to just crumble. Oh, I don't picture nothing like that, Luke. Oh, now, don't take this light, Grandpa. You might not think it's serious, but it is. I'd appreciate it if you didn't mention it to the family. All right, Luke. Your hair is safe with me. Mum's a word. Um, Sorry about the tree spray. Oh, that's all right. I'll call up McGinnis and have his uh, delivery man bring it out. Now, let's see that head grease Al done give you. Oh. <laughs> Why, this Bernice Fleming's head cream. Well, how'd you know that? You can't read. Oh, I know it by the label. This is famous. Why, there's little old Bernice herself right there with a the sheep on the leash, see? <laughs> what? You mean it's that well-known? Oh, this goes way back to when I was a boy. This is world famous. <laughs> then it must be good, huh? Oh, the best. Why, all our Uncle Josh's boys used it. <laughs> Grandpa, you're done right in telling us. And I just feel terrible about the way I talk to him. Well, I kind of like his head with all the bumps showing. You understand what I'm getting at, don't you, Kate? I think I do, Grandpa. What with worrying about his hair, and Luke's forgotten all of his other qualities. That's right. Poor Luke. He's got so many good points, too. Why, he's got a fine sense of humor and a nice-shaped face. There just must be some way of letting him know these things. Yeah. Hi. Luke? I just noticed something. 
You got a wonderful sense of humor. Well, all I said was hi. Yeah, but you said it real funny. Little Luke, there's a dish of soap in the kitchen. Go have it for lunch. Well, I just come in to tell you McGinnis's truck is coming up the road. Oh, that'll be the tree spray. Yeah. Luke, I made some blueberry pie. Would you like some? It's your favorite. Oh, no thanks. I'll just pour myself a cup of coffee. Hello. Hey. Delivery from McGinnis's. Oh, yeah? <laughs> Didn't take you long to get out of here. Well, I had the truck running on all four cylinders for the first time since I've been there. <laughs> you know, I think McGinnis thinks he's got a three-cylinder truck. <laughs> Shut the can down there. All right. How much do we owe you, uh, uh, Joe Seppner? <laughs> uh, that's a four nine. <laughs> How much? Four ninety. It's four ninety, Kate. I'll get it, Grandpa. You been with McGinnis long? Oh, a couple of weeks. How do you get along with the old coot? Oh, I get along fine with everybody. No one gets in my hair. <laughs> Here you are, and there's ten cents extra as a tip for you. Oh, you don't have to tip me, ma'am. It's all part of my job. Gosh, I'm just happy to be able to take a ride out here. <laughs> you say, Kate. Why don't you invite this happy fellow to come in and have a cup of coffee? Well, sure, sure. This is Joe Stephanie Kate. Well, howdy. Hi. Wouldn't you like a piece of blueberry pie, too? Oh, that sounds great. Good morning, Joe. Thank you. Oh, uh, Joe, this is Hassie. How do you Hi. do, Hassie? Hey, Luke. 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 You meet Joe Stephanie. Hi, Luke. How do? Uh... Howdy. Hi. Sit yourself down, Joe. Oh, thank you. Big husky fella like you, you must have been an athlete. Oh, I played a little football for the Valley Aggies. Why, sure. You're Galvin Joe Stepner. That's me, son. Gosh, a football hero right in our own house. Did you hear that, Luke? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Boy, I never will forget that game that you ran 90 yards for a touchdown. I heard it on the radio. Yeah, that was against Liebling State College. Boy, that was some weekend. My picture was in every paper. <laughs> this shiny old dome of mine was on every sports page in the area. Shiny old dome? For the lover. Well, I never noticed you was bald-headed. Did you, Kate? I, I, I sure didn't. Did you, Luke? Well, I... Well, you know, most people don't. I used to think they did, though, because I used to think so much about it. Well, <clears throat> you mean you don't think much about it no more? Of course not. Being bald don't bother me at all anymore. You don't, huh? No. I got a million friends. You know, I'm president of the College Alumni Association. No fool. Yes, sir. And I'm making great progress in the hardware business, too. I say, you're doing all right, huh? I sure am. You sound like a, a real happy fella. Why shouldn't I be? I got it made. <laughs> you sure have. Yes, sir. And I say to heck with women. Who needs them? <laughs> Look, I said I don't want nothing. You should have stolen away a lot of that pie tonight, Missy. Hmm? What's my first piece, Grandpa? <laughs> That's the first piece too many. <laughs> what? Well, you know, them pies of yours ain't skinny making, you know. <laughs> but I never. Don't act so surprised. You know you're getting fat. Grandpa, are you serious? You're darn right I'm serious. You just open your eyes and you'll notice why them little old arms of yours is commencing to look like freckle liverwurst. Grandpa, that's downright insulting. The truth all this is, Luke. Well, I admit I put on one or two pounds, but it, it, it sure don't... It sure do. Well, I never. And in the wrong places, too. Well, Grandpa, I'm not a teenager anymore. You can't expect me to look like one forever. Excuse me. Well, now see what you've done. Well, she didn't have to take it so god done personal. <laughs> How else was she supposed to take it? Well, Grandpa, if you had some kind of a comment to make, the least you could have done is... You could have said it in a nicer way. But look, there ain't no nice way to tell a woman she's a getting fat. <laughs> So what if she is? Who cares? Who are you, some kind of an authority on what people ought to look like? 
Grandpa, you go out there and you tell her you're sorry. All right. All right. I'll go tell her I'm real sorry that, that she's fat. <laughs> you, you mind. Grandpa didn't mean what he said. You know that. <laughs> that was just some of his ornery supper talk. But it's true, Luke. I have gained a little weight. Oh, so what? That ain't important. I, I try to keep myself looking nice for you, but... Well, I, I guess I'm just not as young as I used to be. Look at me. Come on, look, look at, look at me. You know that no matter what, I'll always love you. Even if I get a little fat? The more Kate, the better, I say. Oh, look, I'm so glad you said that. I guess we can't look like kids forever, can we? Heck no. When you get a little older, well, your looks change. Besides, who gives a darn about looks? They ain't important when you love somebody. I'm so happy you feel that way, Luke. I'll always love you, too. No matter how you look. 